Hey folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to take a first look at Grand Ages Medieval. Now, there's a few things to get out of the way before we begin. It's worth noting that the game won't be available until late September 2015, today being August 12th, 2015. So the game is still a month away before it actually releases to the general public. As such, what you're seeing here is not the final version. There may be some errors that pop up from time to time, and as such, this is not a review view this is more of a let's play slash preview slash first impressions video i haven't had a chance to play it myself so this is going to be more of a first impressions video i'll be learning as i play today so here's the main menu load new game multiplayer leaderboard options additional content and credits under options you've got different tabs here gameplay event videos center unit game tips tool tips pause and dialogue subtitles auto save and language Controls, WASD to scroll around, graphics, you've got your graphics adapter here, that's mine anyway, the GeForce GTX 780. Monitor, I have zero. I only have the one monitor, so I guess it defaults to zero. Screen resolution here, interface, details, display, and V-Sync. Under sound, you've got overall music, atmosphere, effects, language, and videos. Now I have the music turned off for the sake of the commentary and to prevent any sort of copyright issues, but there is music. And I wish I could leave it on because I enjoy that medieval-esque sound, but, you know, most uh, copyright flags on YouTube is related to music, so I have to turn that off. Alright, so I can choose my multiplayer name and portrait if I want to. Um, not sure which one I'd go with, honestly. <laughs> but you can see there's a lot to choose from, I guess, this guy. Alright. Alright, so let's just go ahead and start a new game, see how she plays. There's a campaign. The story takes place in the region around Constantinople in the year 1050. This will take you through all features of the game, after which it will be converted into an open game. There's an open game. This game mode allows you to customize starting conditions and the difficulty level. Will you, the ruler of a small town, succeed in rising up the ranks and ultimately becoming the emperor of all of Europe? Alright, so that's your two choices. Campaign and open game. Just to quickly see what options we would have. Um... I just went ahead and just started an open game. You can customize your shield from the looks of it, which is really cool. I'm not sure which one I'd go with. Um, is there one with a wolf on it? Saber Wolf was my handle way back in the day when the MSN Gaming Zone was a thing. Back when I played X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter. Um, I guess not. So we'll have to choose uh, one of these striped patterns, I guess. I guess that one. Shield color. Um, I like the blue, personally. Oh, I could do blue and black, but I guess we'll use white just to, so it's more visible. Black might be hard to see. And game settings. You've got game world. There's Europe, Hansa, Mediterranean Sea, East, Black Sea, Middle, or all of... Okay, so this is all of Europe here. And then your competitors. Uh, you can choose between 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or 8. And it looks like the maximum competitors you can choose depends on what map you choose or game world. Starting region... Um, I can choose a starting region or have it selected to random, so I could start in France or Poland, Spain, Arabia, so on and so forth. Starting town. Um, so it looks like I can choose a starting town within that region, which is really cool too. But if you leave this on the region on random, then this has to stay on random. Uh, starting funds. It looks like 200,000 maybe or 200. It's, I can't tell if that's a period or a comma. And then one city. All right, so you can start with like, it's either 1,000 or 1 million. Again, I can't tell if these are commas or periods, but it looks like you also start with more cities possibly. So that's pretty cool. You can actually customize your starting funds. Starting funds AI, I'm going to go ahead and do lower. Well, actually, I'm not going to play this. I just, I want to get the tutorial out of the way first. And then difficulty, there's um, advanced, normal, and pro. Now I'm curious. Normal, advanced, pro. Okay, so I'm guessing advanced is like above normal and then pro is the best, I'm guessing. I don't know why they couldn't do just easy, normal, hard. But again, this game is a month away from being released, so maybe they'll change the words here, but I don't know. Details, let's check that out. Oh, nice. So I can actually customize the uh, difficulty even further. Maxim maximum price, I can do like very low... See, they did low, very low normal here, so why couldn't they do that with the difficulty? I don't know. 
Uh, maintenance, normal high, very high. Popularity, normal high, very high. Banded activity, normal high, very high. Events, often, very often, normal. Simulation, uh, normal, advanced, or pro. And, uh, well, simulation, the tooltip says shortage of commodities will have more influence on wealth and will make beggars leave earlier. Okay. Price collapse decreases the maximum price in towns with more than 5,000 inhabitants by 0%, 10% high, or 20% very high. Okay. So that's really cool. You can even customize that further. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and start a campaign. We'll see how the tutorial plays. And I guess I'm stuck with this Leon character. I suppose if there's dialogue, that would stand to reason. Would you like to get a short introduction about the basic controls? You can skip this introduction at any time you want. Um, I guess okay, sure. Okay, so it looks like there's a slideshow of sorts in the upper right-hand corner here. Uh, Alright, so I can zoom... Whoa! I can zoom, like, really close if I want to. Look at that. That's really cool. I can actually see people going about their daily lives. I can hear dogs barking and people talking. That's really cool. Alright. Zoom out as far as I can. Holy cow, look at this. Huge. WSD to... Okay, got that. Or I can move the mouse cursor. And it looks like the slideshow automatically advances if I complete that part of the tutorial. Now press the middle mouse button and move the mouse to rotate. Oh, okay. Interesting. You can also use Q and E. Whee! Okay. Alright, so why isn't that advancing now? You guys are probably getting, like, motion sickness after... Yeah, there we go. There we go. Zoom out until the town name and symbols of Sophia become visible, and then click on the small military symbol to select the scout. Alright. Military, there we go. Troops in town, okay. Oh, there we go. Lower left-hand corner, there's the scout. Troop size, 10 out of 10. Veteran level, 0%. Morale. I can disband the unit. Uh, looks like... That might be a flea button or run button. Only possible in battle. Troop already has maximum number of soldiers, so this must be like a reinforce or something. And then you've got this shovel. I don't know what that does. Maybe it's some sort of maintenance. Okay. Now right-click on a position outside of town. Almost there. There we go. Now send your scout to the nearby town of Budapest. It's nearby. Is it? Oh, in trench. That's what that shovel is. Let's get on with it. We're practically there. <laughs> I'm earning achievements in the lower right-hand corner, Boy Scout. Almost there. Two out of ten. All right. As the town of Budapest is visible, you can click on the town center and choose the tab diplomacy. Oh, there we go. So let us finally get to know each other. Okay, now make an offer. Ma make an offer by offering at least four thousand, or I I'm guessing it's four thousand three hundred. I mean, it wouldn't make sense to offer four point three coin. <laughs> so I'm guessing this is a comma and not a period. And asking for a trade agreement. All right. So I want to submit an offer. What do you have to offer me other than empty promises? All right. So I can do. I can offer gold. Quantity. Can I just? Can I type it in? Oh, I can. Okay. Four three zero zero. Okay. And then I want a trade agreement. So alliance select trade agreement and hit OK. Now before I hit offer, I want to see what this the rest of this stuff is. Um, this looks like some sort of approval. Green must be like peace or happiness. And this red might be like war. And this symbol here is sympathy. I've got 30% of that transit agreement if you would like to travel through foreign territory with a trader settler or building squad you will first require a transit agreement okay all right so let's offer this Very well agreed a trader is waiting for orders in sophia select him by clicking on the trader symbol next to the town name all right so i guess i want to close this i guess i can click on the mini map there we go all right Traders in town. 
Bogomil Volkovic. All right. Um, in each town, there are several buildings where you can carry out important actions. The most important building is your office in the town center. Click on it so that your trader can interact with it. All right, so I need to zoom in, I guess. Okay. This dialogue provides you with information on the town. This is where you can configure your commodities production, check the stock of commodities in the town, and carry out trade, provided you have selected a trader in the town. Now have a look at the various areas. Okay, so there's overview here. Inhabitants in town is 800. Workers, 200. Free workers, 30. Weekly change in the number of free workers, plus one. So we are getting more free workers. Soldiers within supply radius, plus 10. Carts in town, 5. Prosperity. The people of this town have no reason to complain. As long as the supply of commodities remains stable, its prosperity will continue to increase. Okay. Configure production. Alright, now, there, it looks like there's different buildings, too. Like, there's lumberjacks, brickyards. But I think this is to actually construct something. Maybe. Buildings in town is in and office. Alright, let's stop doing that. I'm just clicking on random stuff now. Alright, lumber. Alright, so I clicked on the lumberjack and it's asking me if I want to build it. Building costs 40 bricks. I have 104, I guess, in reserve. 12,000. And then it requires... Or 12,000 coin and 8 weeks to complete it. Alright, let's move on to the next tab. Production. Alright, so I'm guessing this is what I'm producing right now. So it looks like I may have a lumberjack already. Number of businesses, two, actually. I've got two brickyards. I've got two of these grain farms and two of these fruit farms. Okay. And it looks like down here it says production per week, eight. And this one is pr production price per barrel. So it looks like this fruit farm is actually the most uh, lucrative right now. At least if I'm reading this right. Efficiency, I can actually reduce that if I want to, or increase it. Alright, let's look at trade. Alright, so on the trade menu, it looks like these are all the commodities available to me. And these green barrels must be, like, how much is in the town. Or maybe that's the supply and demand rating, maybe? Can I click on... Oh, I can. If I click and hold, this brings up, like, a, tr a buy and sell menu. Okay. I see. So I guess I can take, I can buy this for 829, 20 barrels. Um, and you'll notice that the green barrel went away there on the left. So as I take more away, it reduces the supply. Okay. This reminds me a little bit of Patrician. It's, it's more sea-oriented, though. This seems to be more land-oriented. Consumption. Um... Alright, so I guess this is what Sophia, which is the town here, is consuming on a regular basis. And all towns. Okay. So what's the difference between this and this? Now, is all towns, is that every town that I've seen already? I'm going to have to look into that further. Alright. What's next? Uh, you can trade commodities between the town and trader with selected traders. Now go to the trade tab and purchase 50 barrels of bricks. Alright. Up to 50. Alright, that cost me two grand. Um, in accordance with the principle of supply and demand, the price will increase when the commodity is in short supply in the town. The stock bars next to the commodities indicate the available stock. Okay. Now close the town dialog as you should sell the commodities in a high in a town where the, they will fetch a high price. So yeah, buy low, sell high. Got that. Okay. So how do I do that? Now send your trader to Budapest by right-clicking on the town. All right, well my trader is selected, so I want to right-click up here. Exquisite. I thought so. My poor scout's just sort of hanging out up here. Almost there. Let's get on with it. Alright, so is that guy... Are there time controls in this game? Oh, upper right-hand corner. Game speed. There we go. I can change it from uh, 1 to 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 1, or times 3. Cool. Okay. 
You can increase... Oh, okay, right on the tooltip. I guess I missed that. You can increase the game speed by pressing spacebar. So where is he at? Here he is. So I'm going to hold in spacebar. And now the trader is hauling you-know-what to Budapest. There he goes. We'll zoom in. I'm trying to do that gently. <laughs> so as not to make you guys sick. Alright. Uh, now open the town dialogue for Budapest. Alright, so I need to click on that. Trade. Maybe. And sell 50 barrels of bricks. Alright, so... Oh, I have to click on the trader first. There we go. Now try it. Trade. Ah, okay. Alright, so 50 barrels of bricks. So I'm going to sell that. Alright, so um, I'm selling it for 3400 which I bought it for two grand or so. So I had to make a profit. Once you have done this, close the town dialogue. You can now set the overall game speed in the HUD. Choose a low speed so that you do not miss anything while considering your next move. All right. Point one. Idle units of yours will be displayed next to the game speed. You can click on the symbols next to the numbers to switch back and forth. Oh, cool. I like that. All right. One more thing before we end this introduction. On the bottom right of the game tips window, you will find information to help with the establishment of your empire. All right. So where's the game tips window? Um... Have a look at these tips. Well, I'd like to. Where, where is it? Bottom right corner of the... Oh, here we go. It's above the mini-map here. The question mark. All right. So, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff here to look at. Infrastructure, economic system, units. Wow. Okay, so I've got a lot of learning to do. Multiplayer. The basic introduction is now complete. Additional information is available at the help dialogue and will, provided, will be provided by tips which will be displayed during the game. Okay, so is that it then? Oh, chapter one, okay. The 11th century. All of Europe is an upheaval. Bold rulers achieve new independence from churches and kings. Increasing numbers of towns that grow ever more influential arise around monasteries and dioceses. Skilled... All right, so I went ahead and skipped the cutscene and went back to the main menu. Um, the cutscene, I wanted to show it to you guys because it had a bunch of history and, and explained who Leon was and all that jazz, but it turned out to be like 8 to 10 minutes long. So, yeah, rather than um, extend the video out and possibly bore you folks to death, I just went ahead and skipped that. Um, and now we're back at the main menu, and this is where I think I'll end the video for now. Um, more than likely, I'll be recording another video very soon, uh, either doing the open game or trying out the first campaign mission. So if you guys do want to see more, uh, feel free to leave comments, let me know. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel, that way you can keep up to date with any new content I happen to publish. And I also have an official website out there, www.dadsgamingaddiction.com. This is Vince, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.